Well, the play there that saved the day, but uh, you have to say that it was an exciting match one here in the Paladins console league between Vex and Radiant. We hoped it would be top two teams and went the way of the top team. 4-0, and oh, stay yeah. vexed. And now we're going to travel on to the next set here, which is between the teams that are uh, in an interesting spot of trying to find their rhythm. And I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, I believe OTP and Zimmerframe, right, will yep. be uh, playing today. And right now, actually, so we'll be getting into the maps in just a minute. You know, big... Big, big moments here, I think, for these teams to now I was, yeah. make a statement. Kind of kind of rooting for Radiant there just to keep things interesting in this right. region, honestly. But Zimmerframe and OTP will uh, have a lot of their fate decided for them already. Zimmerframe bans out the Jag. Falls OTP gets rid of Timber Mill. Mm. And Frog Isle will be the first map that we go to. And as the uh, season of the split here starts to wind down, I hope that we start to see... Maybe some more spicy drafts come through. Yeah. I mean, the Koga consistent ban is what we've seen across that last set for Radiant. It ended up not working for them at the end of the day. Let's go. Frog Isle is a map where we could see them. Ask and you shall receive. And there it is. The first pick, Koga. Wow. <sighs> Obviously, refreshing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a breath of fresh air. This is what I'm talking about. This is the control that I want over the drafts. This is it. Nick did it. You're so Who they, wants to be my team, my puppet team? <laughs> so how do you feel about the Koga? Obviously, I think OTP taking the Torval mm. in tandem to make sure that the Koga is not yeah. paired with it as well. Because that's a pretty uh, – that's a scary combination there for sure. But there's a couple of ways that I think Zimmerframe could go with this here. And I, I don't want to see OTP draft any more front lines here. I don't think they will. With the Koga, when he's just allowed to rip into people, especially while receiving increased healing from a Grover who is going to be pretty much ever present with him, you would hope. Yeah, good call. On Frog Io, I mean, it could be a really nasty combination. He's going to live through every ultimate. Maybe get some more Cauterize online if it has to be a, a Leon, but at this point, OTP just have kind of a weird draft. It's a great pairing. I mean, actually, the more I think about it, the more I like it. The Grover with the Koga and the Trigger Happy 5. I mean, off of that passive heal, you're going to get a lot of value from it. Uh, and of course, the burst heal as well when that comes through. I mean, fifty percent extra. I like Spicy. it. I like it. I'll buy it. Geno's locked in here as well for some damage amp. And uh, with the Zen and the Cassie and the Makoa, they will need it to go up against the Will, the Grover, and the Koga on the other side of things. Zimmerframe putting their bets on the newest champion in the realm. I like this. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of that old school lineup here coming out from OTP. The Genos, the Zen, the Torvald. A lot invested into this uh, into this backline for sure, and maybe the best way to deal with Koga is just to blow him up. Yeah, that might be it. What do you guys think? Who wins the draft here? Is it the Cassie, the Zen, and the Genos, or do you find that the Koga is going to do what everyone says he will do, which is dominate and be the best in the realm? I'm not sure if Koga is you know, given more credence mm. than he actually deserves, but I do know that he definitely has some serious win conditions, and when they appear... Uh, there's really not a lot of things you can do to stop it. Certainly riding high on that on that new champion buzz where, especially when one has a strong release like Koga did, then yeah. uh, people are just more quick to want to ban it out than figure out how to play against it. So yeah. perhaps Koga still riding in that area a little bit. Sibs EU will be piloting in it. Fairly standard choices here from everyone. Looks like it will be a treacherous ground, which is a little bit of a, a little bit of a break from the norm. And I like, you know, I think Sibs had a good performance. Uh, he had a really nice game on Stonekeep as the Cassie last week. Um, it's why he was playing the Zen. Pretty familiar for him. I wonder if that has a conversation piece is because he's on the Fernando now. And you may be even, even assuming that, like, this is really an intentionally flank-oriented Fernando. Uh, that's going to pair on this right side and try and get into the back line. Already the shield making a big impact. Zimmerframe with the Koga. Get the uh, better end of the draft according to Mixer Chat. Oh, and look at this. Wow. What was the decision there? I really? think he, I think he just misclicked. Tell me how you really he feel. He had to have misclicked there. You think? It makes wow. no sense. Dumped all of his energy into that dash. <laughs> to oh, do <man>. what? <laughs> to whiff. You, why not just dash with your Did other he dash? Have, does he have, like, some card or something that he was hoping to bank off of? I mean, he just gave I, that one back. Definitely, a, definitely a mistake. The only reason I say that is because I have accidentally done that. As well, playing Koga on console, <laughs> playing Koga on console. I've accidentally, really? yeah, like, oh, that's the dang. I keep trying to press my other deck. Like, I've actually done that. So, let's just hope. But he he switched to the claws and then I don't know. Definitely off to a rough start there. 
But yeah. Simziu staying alive, and that's LZ Legends over committing. So this should be Zimmerframe able to push back in with their numbers advantage and just push OTP off the point. There's another one. Torval goes down as well. Oh, good wall. And that's a nice Warner's feel. That's oh. a double Hamished finding it again. And now Zimmerframe feel like that was just a, a, an old a dodge. They're back in new form. Treacherous ground, man. It's, it's one of those talents. When you see it, you're like, oh, goodness gracious, how to... And, you know, if you're not ready to counterplay it, I mean, it's it's tough. It's going to get so much value, and it's it's hard to be that guy that buys Bulldozer, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I, I'm all about that, Nick. And at this point, you see that the Willow's starting to pick up the Koga, not just using all of his energy to dash into midair and then die. I think these are all good steps to winning your game. Let's take a look at this Koga's loadout. Yeah. Let's see, uh, he's got Cohen. Pretty He's much the standard stuff. Okay. And I'm actually curious as what his jump height looks like with uh, that 20%. Last time I played with that card, you really, I didn't really feel it. Really? I'd love to see a level five of that though. Yeah, it's it's kind of for me. It's it's one of those like why nice do you dash? why do you buy jump height on, on other champions, right? Right. To get places, right? Where can't you get with Koga? That's Where true. Can't you just walk up the wall. Yeah. Why yeah. jump when you can walk on the wall? You know, it's a one-pointer. I like people styling on their one-pointers. I want to see a one-pointer that's just, like, never seen before on some mainstay champions, just because you can. I, and you know what? I, I, I respect it, but again, still trying to figure out and maximize Koga, and it's the game one. Yeah. Get your jump height. You're right. Where are you benefiting from that in this map? Maybe just a little bit of outplay. Jumping up higher than they expect. Harder to track. How important is, uh, you know, your movement speed? And your jump height. Yeah. Could be some good stuff to, you know, test out. Ooh, good shadow step back onto the map. That was a hyper beam that did end up sending Hamish Ooh. the Inara off. There's a bubble as well, but oh, LZ Legends into the billow. There are two ways for him to stay alive. Best way right now, though, is just to get the heck out of Dodge. Sibziu firing away. He's got his ultimate, the Cyclone Strike, ready, but hasn't found the perfect moment to use it. Trying to find a way. Get into the back line and rip that off. A lot of fat. I mean, it's going to be hard to land that one on anyone but Torvald, I think. Everyone else moving fairly quickly. Got to watch. I don't even think you'd get the kill on Makoa either if you were able to land the full duration. He's, he's simply too thick. Seconds remaining. So it's interesting to see how this is operating. I, I believe what we're seeing is that Grover heal go from 40 to 56 per tick because of the 40% increased healing regeneration when Koga is firing his weapons on the card trigger happy. Nine, eight, My calculations are correct. That would six, put five, the math checks out. The math would check out. Three, two, there, what level was he running? It was uh, four? level four. Oh. So it would be four per level. If, not the full investment. Not the full investment. And that, I guess, would take it from 40 to 60 Ooh. in terms of a tick, passive healing. Sibs will go down first. I mean, this Torvald Zin combo is currently rolling in the back line, but the legs have been cut out from under it, and the Ooh. payload just goes through. Too busy with the back line. And Makoa, you have to imagine, was the guy you expect to be on there, but West Side, not at his post. Yeah. And you know, the convicts escape. I always like these matchups in many ways because they help a team discover their identity as to how they want to play Paladins, what they want to do. It's really hard to decide, here's who we are as a unit. When you play against these teams, you've already figured that out, and then they 4-0 you. Or they, they make it so that you're more reacting to them all the time. At this point, I'm seeing OTP and Zimmerframe, they both have a lot of opportunities to be successful. It's just a matter of which one takes control. And right now, only 1-4 and four on the Koga. Honestly, you know, not hitting its marks. And Grover resilience? is winning that battle. Yeah, I imagine that's for the Torvald silence. That's the that's the biggest thing. Yeah, okay. Channel script as well doesn't sure. help. It's not great. And Torvald so Ooh. good with and against the flanks. Just giving those moments of vulnerability. Oh, LG no. Legends out of ammo, out of time. Missed ultimate, throws up the counter. Can't even get the billow off. Was crippled. Whitey with the beautiful immortal heal just to keep it all going. And great stuff from Killer on the nice. Grover. Whirlwind, <laughs> look at those healing numbers. Cauterize them all you like, buddy. It's still going to keep me nice and healthy. Grover passively healing now for 20 a tick, but that's going to go right back up to 44. Is Whitey might have a little bit of uh, rejuvenate in the pocket. And yeah, there it is. There's the non-rejuvenate. 
numbers potentially. But uh, beautiful stuff here already. 36% counting for Zimmer Frame on the objective. And a lockdown. I mean, look at the size of that Warders field there. No one shall pass here. None shall pass. And honestly, it's not, this game's not really being won by the Koga for me. At the no, no, not at all. He's only like one in five here at the front line. The support's locking a lot down for this team here. Zimmer Frame will capture the objective. And maybe we see it let through, right? If it goes one and six, why wouldn't you let it through again? And, and Fluffy. I mean, I think Fluffy as well. I mean, the Willow's been definitely more of a, I think, presence on the objective in turning these fights than the Koga. But you wonder with Sib's earlier start. Okay, that didn't look great. It obviously didn't give him, like, the impression he wanted. He kind of <laughs> tripped on the red carpet. But still, you know, maybe it's that backline kind of Master of Arms Koga where you aren't starting the fight. You're not dashing in, dashing out. But you're more of just like, when a tank becomes susceptible, their cooldowns are down, I can finish them off better than almost anybody else. Because I just can't stop Ooh. firing. Hamish wanted that back step on that hook so bad. And he got it. He did. But does it look as cool when you pump fake three times and finally get your fight? Or do you just kind of look like you're having a seizure? It's it's uh, it's a little bit of both. I guess when you get it done, you we, get it done. You get it done, you get it done. That's good football. And there it is, the guillotine. I guess not even selected. Couldn't have been. It had, was that. That was just a Torvald bubble. That was a Torvald it kinda spike. Looked because I think he's running Yomi. I saw it hit for 1,100. Guillotine can't get that high, can it? Yeah, You're it's 850. Right. That was a Torvald spite. <laughs> nice hit. Wow, that's interesting. That's cool. And that's, that's one of the cool things about Torvald's damage amp is that it, it is all of the damage in your kit. You know, Furia's End Flame and the Genos Luminary, those are just to your in-hand attacks. Torvald gives them the business with the whole kit. That's definitely... I mean, can you do that? I wonder if you could do that for Koga's ultimate. Or I wonder if he would cleanse the bubble. Because he is immune. If you bubble them right before, go into your Cyclone Strike, I would yeah, wonder. I think right before. I don't ah. see a problem with it. I don't see a problem, Captain. We got to test these things. Because they sound fun. So many interactions. Woo! Nice fireball as well. Give him the Gurk. <laughs> Give him the Gurk, dude. Let's go. 28 seconds left. Zimmer Frame are definitely doing the right thing here on Frog Isle. Just trying to poke. Oh, man. Find an opening. Glorious Gurk. But they have to make their move soon. 15 seconds remaining. That looked like a hyper. Something was like flying. I saw some VFX that looked like a hyper beam, and now I'm confused because it wasn't a hyper beam. Oh, man. Jay Tyloo getting low. I think that's the poke they wanted. They have to fall back to protect their damage dealer to Cassie. Torvald does have the hyper beam, and they want to make sure they control the left choke again. Jay Tyloo so low, but this hook should guarantee the kill on to the Fernando. Makoa finding a couple here, west side. Doing his best to keep the right side yeah. nice and safe. Nar gets walked down as well. West side, a couple more shots here. Would decide it, and OTP will hold the defense. Get their first point on the board. Zimmer frame slowed down for at least a little while. Koga sitting about middle of the pack here, three and six. Does have the Cyclone Strike online if he wants to use it, but Zimmer frame, despite this 3 1 lead, you know, just even or negative for everyone on the squad. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. You know, we we have seen console, and I think we see most of competitive play tilt towards the front lines. It's really only in the top, top tier where you really can see the mechanical difference between, you know, if Sheko just hit three rockets, there's nothing you can do about it. Random Noob was, you know, spot on or vice versa. And I think Zimmer Frame here are definitely having a better lineup that just controls the space, the Grover, the Willow, the Inara. It's hard to contest with that, and in terms of a bowl-shaped point like Frog Isle. You don't need the kills to capture the objective. Almost dead even on the healing charts here. That's pretty... Which was not the story at the start of the game here. So Genesis has done a good job keeping up. As well as anti-heal starting to come online. Hyper Beam does not scoop any fraggies. Oops. Sibzy you could just track this poor Makoa down. It hits the Cyclone Strike as well, but there's just so much HP to go around. I'm, I'm not sure why you Cyclone Strike there. I mean, he doesn't use it all last round just to use it on a Makoa who's already retreating. I mean, you're really okay, I think, staying in Master of Arms, hiding around this right corner where Fluffy's hanging, and just firing onto Makoa, who's already committed there. Now OTP and Jay Tyloo, they have an opportunity to try to turn this one around. Wow. Killer getting a little bit lower than he probably would have wanted to. Still, Blast Shot misses up into the air. Oh, tracks him. Get over here, says Makoa. But he's going to let him go. Wow, Makoa. What? 
Oh, he let that one slip, man. He, you know, 30% HP nice. from Makoa is a decent little bit. Jade Tai Lu, he's been holding it down here. He really has kept his boys in this one, and now LT Legends just locks down the door. He picks up two more. Three to one, comeback mechanic in play. Frontliners just now spawning for Zimmer Frame. I don't see a hope at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, this is where this is where I start to look at the missed opportunities. But some some players don't really have the opportunity to do that right now, as they are in the middle of trying to take control back in this match that they've given up. They've ceded to OTP, who are now pushing through. Seedling comes through, won't find any damage either. LZ Legends and his grandpa have been doing great things together this game. <laughs> And that's where I wonder, right? You, you, you look at the flanks that can succeed. Eevee sometimes on her own, Andro on his own, Talus gets played on his own, but but not a lot else, you know, really takes over the game without a Torvald behind it. And I wonder if and when that realization comes through for Koga as well. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Cassie, we saw that be a tremendously impactful pick last set. And you're adding just Torvald bubbles occasionally. And I think that's a really nice pick. We've seen it be successful. The Zen, you know, despite not really being able to take over that game, can, can still mate you pretty well. You know, he's got his counter, he's got his billow, he's got a whirl, he's got a lot of just ways to get around and stay safe. But that Torvald bubble's giving him the edge. What I think Sibs needs to do a little more is this. Stay ever present in these fights. I feel like he's backlining a little too much. You've got three dashes of CC immunity. You drop below 50%, you get another one because you've got something to prove three in your loadout. You use your cycle and strike once in this whole game. I think there's a lot of room for improvement here, and I think he's starting to find it. I mean, that's the best part about yeah. Master of Arms. You can sit mid-range and just tee off on Makoa the whole time, or Torvald, or anyone that Hamish is going to lock down with this treacherous ground. I mean, he's trying to make it easy for you at this point. Yeah. And you look at the way, like, we talked about it already, when he's just got this Makoa locked down. He's just tracking him to, to all hell and then he just like cyclone strikes it and I'm right like, well i mean you're kind of in a good spot there to just continue to tee off i mean single target damage is not like why you pick up a cyclone strike <laughs> not at all my friend look at that 40 turning into 56 right you can here, see trigger happy happening in action 2100 health as well so he's making the most out of his potential health pool and this is what i like to see yeah get a little aggressive there force him back what are they going to do hook you well you could dash away unfortunately the coordination is too good and i think that was a torvald bubble that allowed westside to hit a very damaging cannon blast club is going to find the kill though and i think this will be zimmer frame heading back to the next round with a 3-2 lead nobody around and quietly into that good night this round is in the books Ten ultimates online, though. Zimmer Frame, knowing the situation that they are going to sit in this round. OTP, I think, knowing it as well. Not wanting to spend anything to get back to that objective. Zin sits at top damage on the charts at the moment. 9, 9, and 7. J. Tyloo, 9, 4, and 11. Just kind of nipping at his heels. And clearly, clearly, you know, uh, you know, a Torval Hyper Beam, a McCoy Ancient Rage, you know. All those things are... I don't know, maybe like just random occurrences that happen. And then it's about the party, say if you're dungeon crawling, to really respond to them appropriately. And I think uh, that's where you have to look at Sibs and Fluffy, and you have to look at Jay Tai Lu and, and Legends, and who gets the better end of each other in this day. Who responds to those threats appropriately? Sibs so far had a pretty lackluster round. That Cyclone Strike was off the mark. Didn't find a kill. And here's the Hyper Beam. Who's responding to this? And look, Fluffy Nothing. focusing down the Torvald, and that's probably going to put him down. Nothing, nothing. These hyper beams have uh, not exactly hit the mark. Oh, could have been the one and done there. Oh. Struggling, and this is taking a lot of time to lock this down. Maybe forcing Zimmer Frame to appropriately stagger out their picks as well. Zin in a uh -oh. bit of a situation here. So it was Willow, both of the backliners pushing out. But both of them make it out, and that's the big thing here that Zimmer Frame will look back on and say, this may be what wins us this game. And I like how he gives the whirlwind to the NR. I think that's the smartest move there. And they find Legends, and so now Ancient Rage move, guys. Let him have it. He got 87%. I love it. They just they try to find a little bit of an angle. I think Anara can go back towards her point, but she stays down below, and Killer dies as a result of it. So it's Whitey having to try to carry this himself. He does have two low targets. He's going to find one. It's Whitey can't find the other, and that, unfortunately, is the Geno. So Sibs able to come back, but doesn't want to engage just yet. Has the Cyclone Strike That's as well. That's perfect. He can buy a lot of time on this objective with it. 
You can okay. see just in 360. He wants to. I think he got to go now. Wants to get in there. And Ars here Ooh, as well. Is. Not overzealous with it as well. There, you there go. it is. Going to rip through the Genos very, very quickly. Get some damage on the Cassie as well. But before Dash. he died, there was a nice little mark placed on top of her. The Astro Mark gets some healing through. Sibs does go down when it's all said and done, but it's a 4 4 1. I think. Great stuff here from Zimmerframe to take the game. It was a good execution of the ultimates. The, the the point that they did lost, they were able to zone out extremely well. Yeah. So I didn't feel like they lost anything there. Great stuff. Game one under the books and uh, in the books, so to speak, and under wraps. Now we're able to go into game two here. Coming up shortly, you'll see the map screen, and we'll see where they're taking their opposition. I, I am curious to see, though, if, if we're seeing the Koga again, Nick, because rather unimpressive on the whole, although it did do its job when needed to. And I think that's why you might see it again here. It's going to be Bright Marsh, a little bit closer, a little bit easier to move around, I think, rather than being out in the open. Where does Torvald go? That's the question that I've got. I think that's really what enabled this Zin to be that top damage beast that it ended up being. Because you're seeing, you know, an even slash line. It's tough to be top damage in the game it is. when you're trading out one for one every single time. Normally, the reason that Cassie takes that mantle is because she just sits back and just pokes people all day long. And Yomi Zin can do a little bit of that. And it will be the Torvald ban away. But from OTP. Oh, so the Blaster's ban now. And I think that forced almost the Koga ban, right? Because it was there was a lot of Blasters. You know, I don't think Zimmerframe felt they were going to get a top-tier damage pick uh, if they let the Koga go, and that seemed to be the case if they banned the Khan. So they will at least get their choice of frontline, and it's going to be the Furia as the support. You would expect the Inara, and that's what's paired with it. So right back to OTP. Koga still available as well. OTP won it. It was pretty good. It kind of always is, right? It's hard to mess up an Ancient Rage. We've seen it come close, but it, you know you find some time uh, to stall it out to get some value. Bomb King will be seen for the first time in forever. I know, man. It has been a while, and he's very, very good as a champion. If you didn't realize, Demolition yeah. is uh, so good. That boy. And Zen and Cassie here uh, going to be taken for Zimmer Frame. I like the combination. It's basically taking exactly what OTP ran last game. OTP going to two distinctly different damage dealers. Uh, but sticking with the Makoa and actually adding the Ceres to their lineup. The Vivian will come through. I don't know whether to just take it away so that Zimmerframe don't have an easy source of shield shred or if it's just a comfort pick. I feel like, you know, Sap Around is the choice every time. So it's clear that the niche that she's filling is killing shields. But I feel like people very rarely pick her up to actually do that. And maybe it's just more of a comfort thing. Yeah, maybe it's just the at addition, right? What do you guys think? Who's going to win this game based on the drafts that you just saw? The Barrack at the end was a little bit of a switch up from mm. what we normally see. I think we will see maybe more of a hair trigger Barrack style. If it's tinkering, I'm impressed and I'm, I'm excited to see how it performs. But hair trigger a little bit safer on console. You get the headshots too, which is a boon that you don't get with tinkering. Um, but a little easier to aim and confirm when you get in these up close point fights that you know are going to happen on Bright Marsh. And if Barrack has any hope of. Trucking his way through an enemy front line. Hair trigger is one way to do it. Absolutely. Big thing that I'm looking out for, though, is this Vivian. What kind of value is she going to be able to get? Ooh. Uh, I think if Ty Lu and Legends are able to stay relatively close to receive the firing line buff, I mean, that is an absolute ton of damage that's going to be pouring out of both of those backline carries. And that is one hell of a win condition, especially when you're anyone except Anara. You've got less than a second to live at that point. The bigger question, too, about your sap arounds, and it's not just going to change the opportunity in chaos. I think the Vivian has adjusted her talent, and there it is. It's because, you know, the main front line it doesn't have shields, and Ara works off of Bulldozer to destroy her barricade. And so I think it's a smart choice. Yeah, I don't think Barrack. Wow, someone's not running some billow speed. <laughs> yeah, look at that. We got to take a look at Fluffy's loadout because that is rare. Obviously, Slow the, pull, going. the pull result, results are showing up, but... Ugh, that was hard to watch. Is this a basic deck? <laughs> no. <laughs> you need at least so he's running So he's speed. running Countries in, uh, which is Hideout 5, which is really rarely seen. Usually you get a little bit of 4. <laughs> is that what spawned that song? Yes. He had Hideout 5. It just lasts forever. And you just never see. You always see Hideout 4. But, uh, oh, and funny. it was on this map, too. And then I like Wildfire. I actually really do like this card. I think there's a lot of cool play potential with it. And just going for some extra health. Wildfire 5 and Kronos is like as close to 
a late game champion as I've ever really played. Because once you get those two things rolling, you just hit a couple of people and you go full Beyblade. And it's uh, some of the most fun I've ever had in the game. And I just wonder, maybe, maybe that's the meta that everyone doesn't know is meta. And that's the cool thing about Zin too, or that Beyblade moment of power. It's like it's not, it's not so, it's not super broken either, right? Because you can still be killed while you're whirling around like an idiot. You're right. taking full damage. You're not receiving any more healing or anything like that. And you don't even have iframes during whirl, so like you're you're just this vulnerable little Beyblade. So you can you know you can get that. You can have that moment of power, but it doesn't feel like I'm abusing anything. I'm abusing either. it, yeah. And there it is. Look at that. Uh-oh. Forcing the inflame off of the... Uh... Are oh you God. kidding me? Saris hold there. Pulls him in, but can't quite get much. Fluffy. Able to find Legend. Jay Tyler in response finds Hamish, and this push continues. But boy, man, this has been a rather uncontested round one. It really has. And when you look at this comp from OTP, it is going to stay kind of close together. I don't think anyone's going to be, you know, breaking off and flanking too much. Not only do you have opportunity and chaos to deal with, but once it gets pumped up by firing line as well, I mean, Ty Luke could get to a spot where he just he hits his stride and he's just going to walk down everyone on this team. Yeah. Too much ammo, too much gas in the tank here. Gets the Sentinels rolling as well. I mean, gosh, that's yeah. so much damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to get some headshots. It was a good stun from the Bomb King. I mean, this does feel like a composition that maybe OTP has over Zimmer frame as far as just execution threshold and whether they were able to uh, to deal with it, right? I don't know if it speaks that the Zen 3-4 oh, needed to happen, uh, especially with this Bomb King here proving vital. I mean, execution threshold is definitely something I think of when I look at this comp. It's hit the buttons and things are going to be happening here for you. It's, it's not a whole lot of timing. It's not a whole lot of like, all right, this cooldown's down. We need to hit the buttons. We need to go now. Yeah. Solar Blessing comes through, buys a lot of time for Anara, hooked away. Interesting. And all the while, you're just hearing the, the, the nonstop rain of bullets from Zavivian in the back line. I mean, why why not just kill this Fury? That's what I'm, I'm like, I mean, they must be talking and saying, we have it under control, distract the Anara, make sure she can't pressure our back line. This Yikes. is OTP in a dominant showcase. And they have all five ultimates heading into the next round. Bad Shagger hasn't died. Neither is Westside. Niju and Jay Tyler only taking one death throughout the game. The only potential I see here is in the items. Maybe there's a little bit more cauterized. Maybe there's a little bit more record for Zimmer Frame. But it's that's a four minute round. That's pretty, pretty close. I mean, sometimes you're able to see these teams if they're getting kills, eke out enough credits to actually buy those those level two offensive items. I don't know if Zimmerframe got enough kills though. Let's take a look at the Five, four, item screen and see. Three, two, yeah, they may tell us the the stories. A couple level twos, uh, the Cauterize and the Wrecker from Whitey and Sibs. Other than that, the only other level two is a Rejuvenate. That's not very expensive. Not a lot of great applicators either. Like if no. Barrack misses one shot, I'm pretty sure Cauterize would fall off. Unless it's, I don't think it was Hair Trigger. I haven't even seen Barrack. He's been dead all the time. Yeah. West side's going to get some good value here from this anchor. And he may even stumble into a second kill there. Zinn comes up low HP. Says, hey, what's going on over here? Oh, God. <laughs> Runs away immediately. Missing a few crucial shots. And now actually the... Soil Blessing Fury is back, but it's just a day late. Jay Tyloo, Legends, they find a couple of kills. West side, trying to bring it over to the east side and find a kill onto the Furia. And he's going to do that with the help of Jay Tyloo, who's on a 16 streak. And Nick, you kind of pointed it out. It seems like Vivian's just hit that point where she's running over everybody in this team. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Didn't even need a wrecker or the sap arounds to do it. They didn't even put any, uh, okay. put any walls up here. Yeah, that was a risk. Is that what that's called? I think you just take that L. That's I think you just take the L. <laughs> you just take the L. You know, you're half health, and there, and L, no one is there. None of your teammates are there. You just may want to say, this is this is not going to work out for me. Jay Tyloo and this Khan working so well together also. And that Solar Blessing not hitting. You can see Nara's HP bar. Oh, boy, man. she really needed it. And just getting it up, getting the shield up. Stand in front of her. Get out of the solar she blessing. Bit. Yeah, Come on, she girl. didn't even stand it. Shows you where they're at. Can I, only do so much. I think this is uh, 
not even close. He's given up. He knows this is over. So we are definitely going to wow. be going to another game. This what is the just hell? out drafted, out maneuvered. And I like it from OTP. They make a big statement in game two here. Look at these streaks 14, 23, 21, 17, 6, 6. Come on, Legends. <laughs> Step up. Six. LG Legends getting flanked. Sibs, Fluffy, they find at least a little bit of damage. So, so you're saying there's you're a saying chance. You're saying there's a chance. They are actually going to push back and not just get completely bullied. OTP, though, still in firm control, and it does feel like a matter of time. And maybe just a futile act of resistance. Once these ultimates come back up for OTP, yeah, it's going to be tough to stop for sure. They have a really, really nasty suite of them. Okay. Picking up one more. Floofy. Or Fluxy. You know, I just, I, yeah. X's, I don't know. I do what I want with them. Yeah. I do what I want with that those. That Oh. If that Grumpy Bomb just went off the map, that would have made me so happy. <laughs> well, look at that. Does that make you happy? Legends finds so that the was pick. Sick. And is able to finish off Sibs. Rather unconvincing performance on the Koga. I would say oh, similarly on the Cassie. That's and now right. this Bomb King going right to oh. the target of, of choice there. Fire Strike not going to stun him out. But look at that Damn, Sibs. dude. Right on time. Come on. How do you not hit a stun target? Clean it up, boys. OTP. Couple of little speed bumps here down the stretch. Gets the shield up as well. As you need some heals. Whoa! West side goes down. Zimmer frame. Defend successfully. Wow. Clutched up in the last second. Yeah, it felt like uh, it felt like that missed kill from Legends and Sibs coming back at the right time was what saved it all. So, you know, everything about this composition is meant to allow both of these damage dealers to succeed based on each other's effectiveness in the fight. The more that Legends does as the Bomb King, the more he distracts and allows space for Jay Tyloo to come in, which is the more devastating amount of damage, which allows Legends to continue getting to the spot he wants. Because we're better together. Better together. That's a real song. <laughs> Nimble Bulldozer Saris. What a birthday gift. <laughs> That's exactly what you wanted to see, Let's right? Let's get it. Nibble Bulldozer Saris. And five digits in the name. Oh, Badge yeah. Badge Tiger 39888. Try to get up. Maybe uh, wasn't able to. Boy, that end flame looks like it's going to not save its YD there. But the Dome Shield. Might it? Two versions of a Dome Shield. One with a flame turret in it. One without. Turtle and a <laughs> dwarf walk into a Dome Shield. Who comes out on top? Well, it seems like Zimmer Frame are okay, Nick. A full HP Bomb King. Yeah. Poppy bombing away at full HP. That's the joke. Get it? That's the joke. Be brave, soldier. Three rotund individuals walk into a rotund shield. Oh. And Zimmer Frame capture the point. What a turnaround here. Zimmer Frame, I mean... This makes me angry. They gave up on them before I gave up on them. You know, them. here's where we need to see... Con and this isn't anger, really. It's just the fact that this is where excellence has approached. You can... You have been excellent. You have a great composition, you've been executing, and you let you you don't handle something as simple as finishing off a Fury after a King Bomb. And this is the result of it. And so being able to beat Vex to be the team that comes through in, the, in this region, these things have to get adjusted. You have to take advantage of the moments you're succeeding and succeed even harder versus let the other team back in. And when you have so many ultimates that are supposed to be catch-alls, right? You know, you have overpower, you have you know, stuff like Ancient Rage, like if you fail to execute, you get, you're a Mako with Ancient Rage and you're getting bullied out by a Barrack. Yeah. That's a problem, right? You have these ultimates that are so easy to execute on and can yeah. get value really without much forethought, especially if it comes down to just throwing an R off the map. Don't lose that objective before having used any of your ultimates either. It's, uh, it's, it's just a matter of... Everything shouldn't be up right now for OTP. Yeah, and exactly. It, it's uh, it's one of those things where you just try to figure it out. So much shooting into the Inara. I don't know if you've ever, you know, played against that Inara. You have to kill the Furia first. It's just not going to happen. She's just going to stay alive. And those 
Uh, those things seem to be, you know, figured out a little later, right? They, you know, now they go to the NR. Good, but a lot of the initial part of that fight was spent trying to just burst down a target that was not going to be bursted down. You need to take the source of the healing. And that's where Legends and J. Tyler have been good in round one, but so far round two has been unimpressive. Stop the payload. Double kill. Man, that's a nice double kill, but it's the it's after the fact. It's too late. It's too little too late. Who sings that song? It's just... JoJo. Point it's just too little too late. Is that the, is that the JoJo song that, that we listen to That is the JoJo song, yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. It's kind nice of a good, JoJo. It's a good casting phrase, and I think it Four, sparks that memory three, prior. Two, one. You know, and then delete That's my favorite verse. Yeah, that's a great one. When she does it like that, oh, I'm like, man, JoJo, you are an icon. <laughs> <laughs> and here you go. I think Jay Tyloo got to his spot, but here's the Zen. And you know, you might run out of bullets before Hideout 5 He'll comes not, to an end. <laughs> but luckily, he's got the con right near him. And oh, dropping down was not a good idea. He realizes that goes back into the room. And the way that they're able to just hold this room, it just took so long to do anything about Hamish. Still, Zimmer frame, four men alive. It's and fighting. Oh no, he Couldn't didn't get, get it off, off, dude. Come on. And oh now, my, this is set? Is this, I, I, oh my god, I can't even believe this. I mean, Seismic Crash is coming up, Dome Shield is up. Okay. 87%, he oh throws my. it down, he knows what's coming next. Here comes the King Bomb right under the Dome Shield. Absorbs a nice little chunk of it with the Bowling Ball as well, but Ancient Rage, this time with Gusto, my friend. He gets <laughs> it off. Oh yes. 96 to 42, Whitey. Look at the decision just, making. Look at it, just trying to dive the support instead. Leave these frontliners alone. I like it, they find the kill. Need you, however, comes back in. America. And maybe that was the issue. Fluffy though, it's Whitey Sibs. Cleaning it up. Dude. Are you kidding me? Dude, they gave up. Wow. They quit. And then they just said, all right. Wow. Zimmer frame. Bounce back. Hey. I got to say, my money was, uh, was my on money game was three. On, yeah, game three for sure. But wow. Zimmer frame, uh, they clean up what was a pretty dirty job. Pretty dirty job, I will say. But still, they, they do it. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. Little mistakes. Maybe, you know. You get to that moment as well where you, you want to hold all those ultimates through that 3-2 moment as well. They get the defense. It's 3-3. We still have these ultimates. A little more mistakes come through each and every round. And then good decisions made. Late game items starting to come online. I liked ignoring those front lines, ignoring Khan Makoa, diving Saris. That, that, that was that really better. good. Yeah, that was much better. It allowed them to not be sustained onto the objective. And as we take a look at the standings, that does it for Xbox Europe. Uh, we will be heading into the PS4 side of Europe in just a bit. We are going to take a little bit of a break, switch out some casters, and uh, continue our day of console, which is only, I guess, 25% of the way done here with three more kind of areas and regions to cover. It's going to be an exciting day. Hopefully games like we just saw will be continuing and even more excitement on the horizon. So don't go anywhere. Continue watching. Uh, get ready for this little break, and we'll be right back with more Paladins Console League.